Joining us now from New Haven, Connecticut is Eugene Fidel. He teaches military justice at Yale Law School, and thank you for joining us, Eugene. Good morning. So what happens next, legally speaking? Well, two things are going to happen. Uh, one is there's going to be a continuing investigation by the military uh, investigators to gather evidence. That's going to be quite a challenge because it's going to take place in Afghanistan. And Lord knows what the uh, impediments are going to be to that. So that's got to be proceeding. At the same time, there are going to be uh, some initial steps in the military justice process. In the next few days, there's going to be a pretrial confinement review hearing to uh, confirm that Staff Sergeant Bale should continue to be in pretrial confinement at Fort Leavenworth. Uh, and the first steps will eventually have to be taken to convene an Article 32 investigation, and that's the prelude to a general court-martial, assuming the case proceeds, uh, unfolds that way. As Whit Johnson just laid it out, uh, Staff Sergeant Bales is being painted as a, 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 a wonderful soldier, somebody who's been decorated as a soldier, an individual who may even been dealing with PTSD. How does that play as a defense here? Well, PTSD is not in itself a defense to anything. The question is whether Staff Sergeant Bales and his attorney, uh, attorneys are going to be able to mount a successful insanity defense, and that is not an easy matter. Uh, a person could have all kinds of mental hygiene issues, and yet uh, they may not come even close to satisfying the requirements of the law. Uh, nonetheless, if he's able to advance evidence of mental illness of some kind or stress, uh, that could go to the question of whether he should receive the death sentence, assuming the case is referred to a court-martial and assuming that uh, it's referred as a capital case. I think everybody should catch their breath here and not uh, jump to any conclusions. Uh, obviously, everyone is uh, very, very concerned about mm -hmm. this case, but I also think it's important to respect his right to a fair trial. There, there are certainly those who are, are pondering what the outcome may be if this could be a capital punishment case. And would President Obama then have to sign off on it if the death penalty were the outcome? Well, uh, the law does require the personal affirmative approval of the President of the United States uh, before any military prisoner is executed. We haven't had an execution, incidentally, since 1961 under the Uniform Code of Military Justice. However, I should add that these proceedings are likely to last so long that even if he's reelected, I'm not sure that it would be President Obama that would have to give the mm. final approval if there is a death sentence. Interesting point. Eugene Fidel, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. You're very welcome.